North Texas man says families of those passengers are still struggling with anger and grief. Ken Jenkins is an aviation crisis consultant. He spent two weeks in Malaysia really helping those families try to work through the uncertainty of not knowing what happened to the plane. And part of them says, I, I think they're gone. It's been 14 days and there's no plane. And most likely it, it crashed in the ocean. But since I don't have anything to look at, part of me still hopes that they're alive. Philip Wood, who used to live in Keller's, one of the missing passengers, children at an airport in Malaysia, made this drawing asking for prayers for the missing. 239 families are waiting to hear anything about their loved ones on board. Ken Jenkins is a professional emergency manager who lives here in North Texas. He flew to Kuala Lumpur to help Malaysia Airlines and the families. He is back here in Dallas now and joins us on the phone this morning. Ken, good to have you with us again. And here we go again, another possible lead. How are the families handling this roller coaster of information? Hey, good morning and thank you for having me. Um, the roller coaster just continues to go up and down and up and down. And as you just mentioned, the Chinese have potentially spotted debris from the aircraft, which simply just heightens the emotions that the family members are experiencing. You know, if this is something that could take months or maybe even years, kind of like that Air France flight, to figure out, I mean, what, where does that leave the families? Just kind of in limbo, I guess? It, it is a state of limbo. Uh, unfortunately, um, for Malaysia Airline passengers and crew member families, this incident is quite different than the Air France. Within Air France, there were signs of debris several days after the accident, so there was a presumption, of course, of, of the crash. In this particular case, that presumption hasn't been made, and so the families are still hopeful uh, in several that um, I, I worked with that said um, they're still hoping that the plane landed somewhere, and others that are predisposed to thinking that the plane crashed are just waiting for confirmation with debris being found. And we've seen a lot of the family members just being very upset about all of this. We do have a North Texas native who was on board that flight, Philip Wood from Keller. His family is here. Does that make it easier or harder to be here so far away from those briefings and, and all the, the latest information from the airlines? Or is it maybe better to be away from what looks like a media circus at times? Well, for the, you know, I certainly can't speak on behalf of the families that I haven't spoken to personally. Um, being there in Kuala Lumpur where the information is coming, uh, it certainly can be somewhat chaotic at times with hundreds of people that are waiting to hear news. Um, it, it may be comforting to be at home with your friends and family with you for support versus being there on site. Each person's different in terms of how they receive that. Hmm. Ken Jenkins, who deals with these kinds of emergencies for airlines, uh, we appreciate your time again this morning. Certainly an unprecedented uh, situation that everybody is dealing with. Ken, thanks so much. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you. We don't know yet what happened to the 239 people on board that missing flight, but we can see the impact it's having on their families. A North Texas man went to Malaysia to help those families. He's home now, and Fox 4's Phil Alvarado is here with more on that. Phil. Well, Richard, Ken Jenkins has been helping Malaysian Airlines comfort relatives of the missing passengers and the crew as well, and he admits it is difficult to watch. The news of more satellite information that could be debris raises hope that the mystery of missing flight 370 will be unraveled. The families need just one question answered first. They don't know if their loved ones are alive or dead. Aviation crisis consultant Ken Jenkins is back from Kuala Lumpur where he's been helping families work through the uncertainty. They're faced with this dichotomy of which way do I go? Do I keep maintaining hope or do I let go? Philip Wood was on Flight 370, thousands of miles away in North Texas. His family struggles with the same emotions. Children at the Kuala Lumpur Airport made this drawing for Philip Wood. Jenkins says while in Kuala Lumpur, he saw frustration, anger, and grief on days when relatives find it difficult to hope. It was really hard to watch. It's already being called one of the biggest aviation mysteries in history. Except for a wooden pallet spotted in the water, nothing has been retrieved. There's no wreckage. There's no plane. There's nothing that says my loved one's gone. And because of that, people don't know what to do. They do what they can, pray for a miracle. And part of them says, I, I think they're gone. It's been 14 days and there's no plane. And most likely it, it crashed in the ocean. But since I don't have anything to look at, part of me 
still hopes that they're alive. Ken Jenkins mentioned that some families he met in Malaysia wonder if they should just let go. But then how can you when you don't know what's happened? Richard? The story just mesmerized the world. Uh, I understand that you did have a chance to talk to Philip Wolf Wood's family today. We did. And, uh, you know, we talked to Tom Wood. He's, of course, Philip's brother. And uh, they've uh, been very kind to the media through all this. But uh, he said he just doesn't want to talk on camera again until they know something one way or the other. There is news, of course, of more satellite data. But until they find out uh, the mystery is still there and they have to deal with it every single day. It's got to be tough. Thank you, Phil. A North Texas family says the families of the passengers of the missing Malaysian airliner really are struggling with anger, frustration, and grief. Ken Jenkins is an aviation crisis consultant. He actually spent two weeks, the last two weeks, helping in Malaysia. He was with families and he's trying to help them work through the uncertainty of not knowing what happened to the plane. And part of them says, I, I think they're gone. It's been 14 days and there's no plane. And most likely it, it crashed in the ocean. But since I don't have anything to look at, part of me still hopes that they're alive. Philip Wood, who used to live in Keller, is one of the missing passengers. Children at an airport in Malaysia made a drawing asking for prayers for the missing. A Chinese plane spotted what may be debris from the missing Malaysia Airlines flight in the southern Indian Ocean. The crew saw a white square object in the water. Now, this is the same area where satellites have also spotted something. The U.S. is sending a device that can detect radio transmissions from an aircraft's black box. A North Texas man says the families of the passengers of that flight are struggling with anger, frustration, and grief. Ken Jenkins is an aviation crisis consultant. He spent the last two weeks in Malaysia helping families work through the uncertainty of not knowing what happened to the plane. And part of them says, I, I think they're gone. It's been 14 days and there's no plane. And most likely it, it crashed in the ocean. But since I don't have anything to look at, part of me still hopes that they're alive. Philip Wood, who used to live in Keller, is one of those missing passengers.